Homer and my administration have been actively involved with FEMA and the recovery efforts. And I do want to just highlight uh, Council Member Cole Sigmund and Council President Trina Rios were active on the ground during Ida and helping with the recovery efforts as well. Uh, so was former Council Member Tremaine Reed. I know Terry Albertson, Joshua Fazzoli, and the other uh, volunteers like Pete Albertson were involved as well. So let's give them a round of applause because that was a lot to go through at that time. Since Homer has been appointed, he has guided the process of updating Dinellan's emergency operations plan. So if you ever hear him say EOPs, that's what he's talking about. Has recruited and trained Dinellan's first community emergency response team. If you ever hear him talking about certs, that's what that means. And has secured emergency management agency assistant grants for our OEM in 2022. Homer tells me that we're also on track to get those grant funds for 2023 as well. I and my administration work closely with Homer as well as council members to securing both the COVID-19 testing and vaccination clinic sites here in Dinellan, as well as we did some mobile MVC units. And so without further ado, it's my distinct honor and I am proud to call him a friend outside of just being an OEM coordinator, um, Homer Mosley. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, council members. And thank you, the audience, for taking time out from your schedules to learn a little, about, a little bit about how to prepare for disasters. And the time to prepare for disasters and when you, when you have blue sky conditions. By that I mean, right now, there is nothing on the horizon that will indicate that we're facing another disaster. So the time to plan for disaster is now. First thing I'd like to talk to you about is the fact that, um, well, let me, let me uh, digest a little bit and talk about Ida, because I think that's very important. If you hear most people talk about Ida, they say that Ida caught us by surprise, okay? But Ida didn't catch us by surprise. What happened is Ida caught us um, unprepared. It had been, this tropical storm had been uh, brewing for a long time, and yet and still, everybody was hoping that it turned in another direction. And when it didn't, we got hit pretty hard. So again, um, certain disasters could not be avoided, such as those people's houses that were, um, that were flooded out and the foundations were crushed. However, there were other conditions in terms of people ignoring the warnings and the threats and driving through water. So during Ida, we had uh, opened up an emergency shelter and we took in 22 residents, two cats and two dogs. Some of those or most of those that we took in were water rescues. So again, you need to pay attention to the weather. As you know, climate change is real. And the fact of the matter is that the, um, the weather and climate patterns are changing. For example, I went to a uh, presentation uh, regarding that tornado that hit Gloucester, Gloucester County. And um, it was very interesting because what happened was you don't have that much time to respond to a tornado. Um, you have to react very quickly to that. And one of the things they're talking about is that Tornado Alley is moving towards the northeast. So again, we have to be very cognizant of those weather changes. I'd like to talk to you about these three symbols, the advisory statement, watch and warning. An advisory statement basically uh, is be aware a hazard uh, is expected to occur in your area, okay? It's the least of uh, the ones that you have to be concerned, but, you know, you should pay attention to it. A watch, uh, be prepared, a hazard may occur in your area or nearby. When you get a warning, it's time for you to start initiating action, okay? A hazard expected to occur or is already occurring 
in your area or nearby, and its impact may be serious. The key, the operative word here is serious. Every once in a while, um, the government may, may send out a test and when to test their warning systems. And when they, when they do that, that's the time that you should be reminded that do I have all of my emergency preparedness things in place, such as your emergency kit, uh, your plans. So again, um, we should really pay attention, attention to these type of warnings. Now, OEM, the Office of Emergency Management, takes a all hazard approach to emergency preparations. In other words, there are only a few of these uh, threats or hazards that we are considering now because it's summertime. But we take, again, we take a all hazard approach in our EOPs, the emergency operation plans, basically um, deals with those sort of um, hazards. Tornadoes, again, I just mentioned that tornado alley is moving. As you know, we're in hurricane season and this year it came, uh, came by more quickly. Usually hurricane season starts June 1st. Well, this year when they declare hurricane season, it was in May. So you can see that the patterns are shifting. Of course, we can always have the stream winds, severe warm uh, thunderstorms, high winds, excessive heat, and um, floods and flash floods and power outage. A couple of things I like to mention, as you know, one of the hazards that we face here in the Dowling is the flooding. Okay, so again, um, pay attention to those sort of warnings. Power outages occur, of course, when, uh, for example, it could be power lines down, or it could be the fact that um, there's a lot of people that are using air conditioners. And so again, um, we can experience power outages. Today was a very hot day. As you know, you sometimes we sometimes experience brownouts. So there's 12 ways to prepare before a disaster happens. Number one, you can sign up for alerts and warnings. Now, what we're doing is that we're going to be trying to enhance our alert and warning systems. Uh, we're getting ready to design the OEM cert uh, Facebook page. There are other social media pages out there. Uh, you'll be finding that as we go along, we're going to be putting preparedness tips online as well as letting people know through our social media platform that there are um, threats or disasters that are coming our way. Um, we have a big social media presence here in Denellen, the various um, various uh, council folks, um, the mayor, we have a four, 411, right? We have 411. Um, Alex Miller, our recreation director, actually has a, a uh, email uh, blast that he sends out to people that are, that are registered in terms of his um, email. You probably have gotten uh, some information regarding activities that are happening in Denellen through Alex Miller. And so what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to integrate all of these platforms, including the school. The school, of course, is, is, is one of the uh, things that we want to do in terms of alert warnings because they, they command a large presence, not only in terms of parents and students, but connected to that whole school system are grandparents, aunts, and uncles. So we're going to try to make sure that we try to get the message out to as many people as possible by integrating our social media presence and capability. You should also make a plan, okay? Now's the time to make a plan. And the plan consists of a lot of different things, such as a financial plan, you know, um, it, uh, evacuation plan. So you should start to make a plan. And I'm gonna give you some information tonight that will help you to uh, navigate that. Save for a rainy day. That's very important. Okay. You should really have some cash on hand at your house. You never know when you're not be, you're not going to be able to get to, to the bank. You, do, you don't know whether or not the ATM machines will be going down. 
And so you really should have a little bit of cash in the house just in case. And then there will there'll be people that won't take credit cards through uncertain disasters. So again, I recommend that you save for a rainy day. Practice emergency drills. You need to really have a, 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 a um, emergency drill at your house. Does your family know how to get out of your house, for example? Do they, do they understand? Do they know the best way to evacuate your, from your house? Um, test the uh, family communication plan. And what I mean by this is that, okay, um, number one is uh, when, you, when you leave your house, for example, does your family know that maybe um, our meeting place will be that big tree down the street? Okay, there's been instances where there's been fires where individuals uh, will go back for a loved one not knowing whether or not they, the person got out of the house. And, and as a result, they, they're injured or lose their lives. So you really should have a meeting place. Another part of that communication plan is possibly having your loved ones call Uncle Teddy in another state or another county. And that will be the plan so that everybody will know that um, you're okay. You, you don't know when you're going to be separated from your family members. So that's another um, part of your emergency preparedness. Safeguard documents. I don't need to tell you that because of the fact that you should really have um, copies of your most important papers with you. Okay? You can put them in a plastic bag, things such like you, you know, your mortgage, uh, some uh, rudimentary financial statements. You know, I, I know we all go electronic today. I still prefer having some of my, my documents in paper form. Again, uh, as a way of safeguarding my documents. Plan with neighbors, okay? Neighbors helping neighbors. In the event of disaster, we all are first responders. The CERT program is basically neighbor helping neighbor. Um, they're the first responders until your regular responders can get to you. There's going to be situations where the police, the fire, or EMS may be uh, responding to a much more critical situation. And what you would need is uh, you may need immediate help. Certain members are trained to be, to provide that immediate help. I'll talk a little bit more about CERT in a minute. Okay, make your home safer. Well, how do you make your home safer? Number one, I recommend that everybody get a static-free wrench to turn off your gas. Remember in Manville, there was explosions um, for a couple of buildings. And the reason that happened was the gas wasn't turned off when the floodwaters came. So, again, you should have a static-free wrench to be able to turn off the gas. Do you know how to turn off the gas? Do your family members know how to turn off the gas? Do your family members know about the electrical panel and where the electrical panels are and how to turn that off? Um, I remember when, uh, when Irene, um, I guess it was Irene at the time, um, came and uh, the electricity was off. One of the things that uh, I did, not thinking, I tried, to, I tried to catch my TV from being dumped into the, into the water in my basement was I stepped in that water. That was a no-no. I mean, I could have been uh, fried, okay? So this is something that you really should know about. You know, make sure that that electric panel is turned off. If, you know, if, if you're stepping into water, that has, that has um, rose into the level of your outlets. So again, these are things that you should really pay attention to. Um, also, how do you make a home safer? Well, number one, I hope you have uh, smoke detectors. I hope you have um, fire extinguishers, carbon monoxide detectors. This is how you make your, your home more safer. And um, so know your evacuation routes. As you know, when Denellen became flooded, there's certain areas you couldn't, couldn't go by, you couldn't pass. So you have to know your alternative routes. So I, we call this situational awareness. 
You need to be aware of your situation at all times. Know about your hazards. Again, assemble um, or update supplies. What this means is that everybody should have a gold kit. We'll talk a little bit about what you should have in terms of that emergency supply kit. Not only just for yourself, but also for your pets. You know, I don't know if you're aware of this, that if you evacuate your home and you have a pet, that it is illegal for you to leave your pet and evacuate. It's illegal for a couple of reasons. Number one is, all right, you may have somebody, your first responder, you're putting a first responder again in, in, in danger of going after that, trying to save that pet. Number two, should that pet, um, you know, die, it becomes a uh, health hazard. Okay. Uh, so again, at number three, you know, it's just inhumane. Okay. Most people, some people won't even leave their homes without their pets. But for those people that are considering it, it's illegal. There is actual laws on the books regarding that. Um, get involved with your community. You know, get to, to know your neighbors. Uh, I tell you that, again, when it was Irene, I, I can remember that uh, we, were all, we were all using a common generator to pump the waters out in our basement. Um, the funny story is that, you know, everybody was supposed to take duty, a, a duty watch in terms of um, watching the generator at night. Um, I became the only person that uh, lived up to the time that I was supposed to do it. What we would do is we, you know, you take the plug out and plug another one in so that the water subside. And I was doing that all night long. I was the one where my relief came, but they, they didn't come. So, but again, get involved with your community. In fact, I also share my generator with my neighbor so that, um, you know, in the event that there's flooding in the basement, that has used a bio generator. Ensure, document, and ensure properly. That's very important because during FEMA, uh, during, when we were going around with FEMA and trying to uh, get people reimbursed, um, the FEMA first looks at your insurance documents and then they supplement, um, they supplement the uh, other part of your for reimbursement. So here's uh, how you start to prepare with uh, a disaster supply kit. Water and food. You're going to see that three days comes up a couple of times. Three days of water, okay? Um, one gallon of water per person per day for three days. For three days. And of course, you want to change the water every six months. So you want to have that water supply. You don't want to go thinking about it. You're going to run out to the store and get this water. You're going to want to have it ready. Okay, this also will help you in case you have to shelter in place. Okay, uh, enough food to last each family member at least three days. Can and box food will be for the obvious. Number one, it can't be, won't be contaminated in case it gets wet, you know. Um, box food, of course, you would want to have it in some sort of waterproof container. Manual can opener. If the electricity go out, you're not going to be opening up your food with an electric can opener, okay? Sealed metal or plastic container for storage, we just talked about that. Uh, this is important. Include foods for infants and those people on special diets. So if you have somebody in your household that are on a special diet, again, you have to take that into consideration, okay? And then, of course, we want to replace food every six months. Um, well, COVID... I uh, brought some metal shelving and I stocked by uh, my garage with all sorts of canned goods, not knowing, because you remember at one point in time, the shelves were getting empty. People were just running on, uh, doing runs on, on toilet paper. Well, I had a lot of toilet paper. I didn't want to run toilet paper. But the fact of the matter is now I'm in the process of rotating those foods out and using them so I can restock again. Okay. Again, because one of the things they taught me was that you never know when there's going to be a food shortage. Okay, so, I mean, that's his idea. Again, here are some things that you should have as part of your kit. 
of course, a battery power radio. You want to know what's going on, okay? So you want to have a, a battery powder, power, powder, power radio and flashlights, of course. Now, again, make sure that you have extra batteries, okay? Make sure you have a supply of extra batteries. Resealable plastic bag, anything that can become damaged, you could put in that, those resealable plastic bags. Washcloth and towels, you know, you don't, may not think about that, but you may not. You may be in a situation where you're not going to be able to get to a shower, okay? And, and so and you want to be able to uh, feel uh, somewhat clean. So washcloths and towels, of course, paper cups, plates, and plastic utensils, okay? Things that you can discard. Toothbrushes, toothpaste, shampoo, deodorant, and other toileries. Okay. It's very important, a change of clothing, okay? And an extra pair of shoes and socks for each person. So again, you want to be prepared in case you have to evacuate, in case you have to go to a shelter. Now, I would tell you that when you go to a shelter, and my team here could tell you that don't, don't expect uh, the, the Hilton, okay? Um, but the fact of the matter is um, you should have those items ready. A blankets or a sleeping bag for each person. And then a first aid kit. Other things that you should have, personal identification. And this is very, very important. Copies of your birth and marriage certificates, inventory of household goods, bank account numbers, and other important documents. As I said before, I like to have some paper copies because I don't know what the what the condition is going to be in terms of the, um, the electronics of the bank. Um, here's a suggestion for you too. Take photographs of your house, the inside of your house. Take photographs of your living room, your dining room, your bedroom, your, your, your furniture, okay, and have that because again, that's going to aid in their recovery, okay? Uh, some people actually... Uh, will take a video, a videotape, and they will put on on a videotape the valuable goods. In case, again, if you have to leave or you're trying to get reimbursed from your insurance company, you have a record. And, you know, and as they say, a picture speaks a thousand words. Maps, uh, maps. You know, we getting away from the, the paper maps, okay? But let's say, for example, if the electronics fail. It may be a good idea to have a couple of paper maps around, okay? You may not be able to, uh, to Google uh, your location. You know, cell towers go down. That's a whole different story. Speaking of communications, by the way, um, I'm, very, I'm very proud of that my CERT team members have gotten amateur radio licenses. And what happens is if all else fails, we can communicate through amateur radio. So, um, you know, I'm very proud of that fact. Um, again, extra card and house keys and, and prescription medication. You not, may not be able to get to a pharmacy. So if you can have a little extra supply of medications, it will be very helpful. Again, I said some of these things pertain to your pets. Well, again, you have food and water for three days for your pet. Medicines for your pet, and you can store that in some metal-proof uh, containers. Medical records for your pets. If first aid kit, you can ask your vet about what that should entail. Of course, the collar with the ID tag, uh, rabies, harness, or lease. Now, it's very important that you have these papers with you, and I recommend that perhaps maybe you keep a copy of your pet pa papers in your automobile. Okay, if you have to go to a uh, if you have to go to a shelter with your pet, one thing is that uh, we will want to be able to know that your pet has been immunized. Okay, um, we take the positions that our shelter should be um, for both pets and families. Now, even though those pets are not going to be in the in the occupy areas of human beings for the obvious reasons. Some people are afraid of pets. Um, 
other people may have allergenic reactions to pets. So when we look at disasters, I mean, when we look at, when we look at shelters today, we look at uh, whether or not the particular shelter that we're considering has a separate area for pets so that we can, um, we can uh, put those pets in there in, in, um, in crates. And again, be able, we also look for a separate uh, um, entrance and exit at shelters so that you don't have to take these pets through the general population, okay? But the, the fact of the matter is that the pets are, we expect the pets to come along with the families. Uh, so we talk about the important document, pet registration, vaccination records. We talk about the crate or other pet carrier. Sanitation supply, you got to think about that too. You know, the plastic bag, the doggy bag, uh, litter and litter boxes in terms of cats, newspaper, paper towels, or plastic bag. Very important, a picture of you and your pet. In case you get separated from, from, from your pet, you know, it's, it's nice to, for people to be able to identify your pet through a picture and a detail, detailed description. And of course, you know, pets experience anxiety too, as you know. And so you really need to make sure that you have the, their familiar toys and treats, uh, bedding to reduce that pet stress. Uh, our team, our CERT team also went through um, animal, um, an animal program for disasters. And, um, and, you know, as you know, again, in terms of rather how you approach your pet, they could be under stress. And so, um, again, um, you want to make sure that they have those items to reduce the bed. Okay. Uh, just want to point out a few things. I believe that's before I, uh, we entertain any questions, I just want to point out a few items that I brought with me today. And, and please take this home. This is be prepared, be aware, be prepared, take action. The way this works is that each one of these, each one of these tabs um, is a different threat or disaster. Okay, so for example, I'm just going to open up one. This one is tornado. Okay, and it shows like a, has a little tornado tag, tornado. And what the, what it says is tornado watch, be prepared. There is a potential that a, a tornado will develop. A tornado may occur within the next two to four hours. That's a watch to make a tornado warning, take action. A tornado is occurring or about to occur in the area or nearby. A tornado may occur within the next few minutes to half an hour. Okay. And so what how it break it broken down is it tells you if you have a tornado watch, what you should be doing at home or if you're in a car. The same thing in terms of the tornado warning, the more serious one. Okay. If you're at home or you're in a car. Now, a lot of people think that, uh, you know, a safe place for a tornado is under the bridge. Do not go under the bridge. Do not try to outrun a tornado, okay? So, uh, and it tells you that. So, again, these various tabs will, um, are various disasters. Of course, we don't have to worry about an avalanche, I don't think. <laughs> but it, it gives, again, it's an all-hazard approach, and it tells you what to do when you're faced with that sort of warning. The other thing is, I, I talk about the pets. This is actually, these materials, by the way, are prepared from FEMA. Preparing your pets for emergency makes sense. Get ready now. So it actually talks about the kit, uh, make a plan, and um, be prepared for what might happen. This is very important. Please take this with you. This is a very detailed a document in terms of your emergency financial first aid kit. Okay, it goes into details. It tells you what to record on this or did you have this with you? Um, it's very extensive. So uh, again, make sure that you take that with you. This, this part section talks about medical information. Okay, and that's very important. 
because sometimes you you know you may not be able to communicate that you have something like this with you um, medical responders will know how to uh, take care of you financial and legal documentation again this is a very good document Then I did talk about our CERT team, our Community Emergency Response Team. This is a document that talks about how many people are actually signed up. Um, 600,000 individuals are involved with CERT, 600,000. It's nationwide, it's international. They all, we all receive the same um, training in terms of the, um, the different areas. For example, we learn about light search and rescue. Uh, disaster medical uh, operations. I mean, we actually learn how to stop excessive bleeding. As you know, in terms of some of the shootings, had had people knew knew about how to stop excessive bleeding, some of those students could have survived. So we learned that um, fire safety and utility um, controls, leadership. To, uh, in disaster, because sometimes our CERT members, because we're trained, we may have to mobilize the, 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 the citizens in that area in terms of responding. You know, we may have to give directions to the citizens that are, uh, have the training so that we can multiply our efforts in terms of search it, light search and rescue, et cetera. And traffic and um, crowd control. Um, our CERT team recently did, did the graduation uh, for uh, Denelling High School. We did traffic and pedestrian uh, patrols, uh, controls, as well as situational awareness. So we acted as additional eyes and ears of the police in a, in a crowded situation. So this tells you that uh, CERT is, again, CERT is for everybody. You can take advantage of the CERT training. You don't have to necessarily be part of the CERT team. Uh, the folks that you see here are very dedicated and they've been activated on several occasions. Uh, we did the Memorial Day Parade. Um, they're, again, they're in the process of analyzing potential facilities for shelter. Um, so we're, again, these are dedicated individuals to a CERT team, but you can take the training uh, and uh, it tells you a little bit more about that in this brochure. And this is where I really need everybody's help. I came in in 2000 and um, as the OEM coordinator, I have access to a, a special list of folks that may be, have a disability or need, you know, need extra care. Uh, this register ready is a mechanism whereas people with disabilities can register so that in the event there's a, there's a disaster, we could give more special care to the individuals, okay? I came in, there was 11 people, 11 people in Denellen register for ready, uh, register ready. Now you can't tell me that that we don't have you know more people that may need special help, people that may be on oxygen machines, you know, or or have some other disabilities, and yet still they're not on this. This is very private information. I have access to it. First responders have access to it. Nobody else has access to that information. Again, it's designed to take care of people with special needs. And so I need your help in terms of, you know somebody that may need to be register ready, uh, then help them get signed up for this so we know where our special populations are. Okay. So that concludes my uh, presentation. Uh, any questions? No questions? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. Yes. Could you explain a little bit of the system you have for getting the word out uh, as we go to watch the Okay, so one of the things that we want to do is we want to again have our, our, our Facebook page up and running, our, our new improved Facebook page, insert page, so that what we would do is that we have a person responsible for putting that on 
the website. What we have done thus far is that uh, I we have asked um, your your office uh, when we have uh, an alert or warning to uh, to publicize that. Also, um, 411, we're going to try to get 411 involved with that as well. So we're going to try to use as many mechanisms, as many social media uh, platforms that we can use that that we can use to get the message out. Um, I mean, there's other ways that you do alert warnings. For example, um, in certain cases, we may have a, a patrol cars go out, the police and, and loudspeakers. There may be other times, whereas the CERT team may go knocking on doors, you know, as another way of kind of warning the public. So again, um, I'm trying to uh, negotiate a mechanism or process, whereas we we uh, piggyback off the school, the school's a platform. As you know, the school when the school's closing, they send out messages. So as many as many public forums that we possibly can uh, piggyback on, we're going to try to get those alert and warnings out. Like the new digital sign. Oh, exactly. That's right. I forgot about the. I forgot about the the, the uh, new digital sign. That's another that's another mechanism by uh, which we could get that information out. So again, that's very important. That's that's a biggie. Alert and warnings. Yes. We had a complaint in this town, uh, and what we were living in Scalaway. We were the special one has zone eighty. Okay. Eighty zones here. Um, yes, there are. There are. Brooks, some of the houses of Brooks and Foundation. But for example, well, I, I'm, a, I'm in a 100-year flood zone, okay? But the, those, 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 I don't, I think it was A, I think, I'm not quite sure of the classification, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And again, the flood maps are about to change because of the Greenbrook uh, Flood Commission. Am I right? Um, and so work is being done um, as we as we speak. Yes. About to change, they are in the process of changing it, but it is a couple of years out. Okay. It's been a couple of years out since. Yes. <laughs> there's finally four. There's finally four hundred ninety-five million dollars that's been allocated to finish the project. So once the project goes through, and we also have. A Colbert project we're doing on the south side of town. So once those projects are through, we can probably get uh, FEMA back in to reevaluate and see what our flood map would be like. There was a pause in the whole situation because whatever the plans were that they started working on, mm -hmm. some hurricane came through and blew it away. And what they said that. Uh, even if they had completed their work, it would not have stopped that damage from happening. That would be right. We lost our house under it. And our report was there 15 years before that, taking pictures and telling me they were going to do something. But they didn't get to it. Of course, the building kept on going on all the time, that was and all that. that can't stop progress. I'm oh, sorry to hear that. Um, yeah, there are there is mitigation funds out there um, in terms of uh, you hear about uh, uh, house uh, elevations and also there's a program uh, whereas certain flooded areas can um, blue acres blue, blue, blue acres where they FEMA buys the house right not FEMA not FEMA blue acres. blue acres buys the house from the individual so that they build no, longer yeah so so there are mitigation. Um, fun out there. We have more questions? Yeah, to go back to the um, notifications, um, like you were doing before cell phones and we just moved in here way back when. They used to do the reverse 911 on the landlines. I mean, is there a way to do that with cell phones? Is that kind of what the school system is using? That, um, I can tell you that the social media committee is, we just purchased a package to update our borough website and they're looking at you sign up, it's almost as a Nixle, but it's mm -hmm. not a Nixle. You sign up through the website and then you notification the town wants to send you. So this is something that OEM would be taking advantage of too. That so long as you sign up, uh, a notification 
would go to your phone as a text and or an email, however you signed up. It won't say what it is, but it'll provide you a link back to that landing page that will state what that notification is about. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. And also, we do uh, we do have the capability right now. We're with um, you know our dispatch center is is a uh, Somerset dispatch center, but they do have the capability of reverse nine one one. Any other questions? Was there a way to kind of get this uh, ready, ready uh, information? Yes. Have you tried to get it out? Have you tried to mail it or close the door? Well, we have, the way we have done it was that we had put it on a website at one point in time. Yeah, right. So, yeah. 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 And we also, ha we have also tried to distribute it at any uh, when we ever go to any fairs, we have this information on, on our table. So we've been distributing some of this. But that's a, that's an idea. Um, you know, just like we just recently uh, posted uh, CERT bulletins throughout town. Um, one of my staff members is, is has that up. We can also uh, probably uh, do something like that in terms of our CERT team. And get on the digital side? Mm-hmm. And get, there you go. So, thank you for that suggestion. Yeah. Again, for members of the public that are watching, the best way is to get in touch with our OEM office for any uh, disaster information or more information on CERT. The best way is to contact you through the website or the OEM office. Yes, uh, my, my business cards are there. Um, also, we have a dedicated uh, CERT coordinator. He's actually actually happens to be my deputy as well. Uh, his name is uh, William Carson, Bill Carson, and so he he has a dual responsibility in terms of uh, OEM deputy as well as the CERT coordinator. Any other questions? Without hearing any, thanks, Homer. Thank you. Dave. Thank you. Let's give Homer a round of applause again. So uh, I hope you can see that we have good information. This will be shared on the website. Um, I'm sure we'll share on Facebook as well. But I just want to thank Homer again. I want to thank everybody for, for participating. As I said earlier in the, in the evening, um, we try to host several mayoral town halls, focusing on various issues in Dinellan, uh, introducing department heads. We will speak about redevelopment at the next one. We try to do one town hall on redevelopment every year. And every yeah every year, so uh, thank you again for participating. And if you have any questions or comments after this, reach out to us, the council members, Homer, myself, Mr. Robbins, and uh, thank you. Hopefully, we get to see you all at the next one. And again, let's give a round of applause to our certs too. So thanks, everybody.